见了。啊、哦，女孩子就站到这边来了。哎呀呀，哎呀呀，你们把先生丢到哪里去？来这边站我地方，你看，包到那边去了。男孩子还好吗？啊，我会被太挤了。哎，奇怪，这个时代女孩子秀很多啊，啊，<笑>女孩子秀很多，哈、啊、，OK， 呼，可怜男孩子，<笑>在家里被欺负，来这里被欺，那<笑>当和尚算了啊，<笑>佛教里面当和尚，勿当，啊。Thank you, thank you. Ah, thank you. Huh. 我衣服是比较亮，我亮人家才看呢、啊，看得注意啊，哈。嗯、啊，黑黑的衣服，外面都卖很多了，是不是 ？When I go shopping outside, look for clothes, mostly only black, gray, coffee color, coffee milk color, and all this all the time, yeah. And if you go to a man's house, you see, if you open his、uh, garderobe, black, 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 black. <laughs> many, many suits, all black. Yeah. Sometimes I go from airplane, you know, before landing, I look down, all black, 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 black. You know, all the men. Sometimes all the men, for some reason, they gather that day. It's all black. The Taiwanese people. They sit in outside. Only the 65 something are allowed to come in. You know, for whatever <laughs> space left. <laughs> Mostly on that side, nothing. And the woman already eaten up half of the man size. I wonder what all the men are doing with their lives. Not trying to get enlightenment. Nothing.、Hmm? The woman is smarter. I don't know why. Huh? Or it's just you tell the husband stay home, take care of the kids, quiet, quiet, good, good, right? I'll be back soon, honey. <laughs> <laughs> sweet talk him into <laughs> sweet talk him into working for you. Hmm. Yes, I wonder. I wonder how come women are so smart. And why men don't do the same stuff? You just see, see, sass a little bit, then you get what you want. You don't know how, do you? Learn it from your wife or girlfriend. Do what they do. <laughs> Give them the same medicine. <laughs> Talk something, you know. Tell some logic stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> She just told us that. The mantra is useless, yes, because only the person who, who the mastery of that mantra, you know, like then transmit it to you, then it has use. Okay, that's why initiation cannot be written. You can't just write a book and then read it and become enlightened, <laughs> or see the light or hear the sound. It has to be transmitted. Yeah. Otherwise, you see Mila Reba working so long years, build so many houses, get beaten, black and blue. See nothing, hear nothing. Next to the master, even he seal it so that he, maybe he not sealing it. But、uh, Mila Reba wasn't pure enough. You see, was not clean enough of the karma in order to even perceive anything. And he even sneaked to go to his master disciple, you know, to stealthily learn it. You get nothing. <laughs> by the way, wrong concept. What are you doing? Just by the way, she remind me something.、Uh, I asked the people before. Maybe you were not here. You know what they do when they were eating. You know, they just hold a bowl like this,、mm, and then.、Mm, mm, mm, mm. I asked him, "What does that mean?" <laughs> I say. Master, we ask Master to bless it before we eat. I thought you were offering something to me, at least from your heart. I'm not eating it, but everything is about you, me, 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 I, I, I. And then I asked them why I came out that that week. They said, "Oh, because Master, I want to see us." <laughs> 
and the other one said, Master want to bless us. And the other one said, because Master think we are cold in here, so come out to comfort us. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is about us, 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 us. You have to turn it around, okay? That's why I teach them to offer to the Buddhas before they eat, not ask for something all the time. But this is a tradition, you know, always ask, oh, please, thank for the food that we're eating, uh, bless our food for us. <laughs> oh, my God. Poor God, you know, so abused, so used. Okay? Turn around, offer something, be thankful, okay? Yeah. I myself, I didn't offer anything. Mostly I don't, yeah? I just thank him. At least thank him, okay? I say, oh, the food belong to you. <laughs> Everything belongs to you anyway. How can I offer you anything? <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and even if I don't offer, you know that I'm very grateful in my heart to all the things that I have, you know, in this life. But for normal people, you should be thankful at least, you know. Offering to the Buddha, the Buddha won't eat it. <laughs> it's just at least some filial spirit, grateful heart. Not always, bless, bless, <laughs> bless us, bless food, bless my house, bless this, bless this, everything for us. That's a wrong concept. Hmm? <laughs> of course the master will bless your food, but why don't you, you know, say something? Huh? Thank you, or my master also have good food and enjoy or something. Always. Bless it, give it, give, give me, give me, give me, give me. That's wrong, okay? That's wrong. Your parents gave you all the things until you've grown up. It's correct, yeah? But sometimes, now and then, you have to make some offering to them. Even they don't ask, you bring them to a restaurant, cook for them, something, you know? Not always uh, the parents give the whole life and then grown up already still want to take something. That's wrong concept, okay? We have to change. We have to be something better than just taking, taking, taking. In case you didn't know, <laughs> maybe some of you, uh, some of you know already. So where did I mark it then? Ah, here. I saw many greens, that's why this green is the one. The last one we talk about is the, the monk who contemplated on the body and the environment, and realize that everything normally pure, but then some, some false concept or something that is impure arise and then mix with it and make it become uh, not so pure. Yeah, Originally it's all from the Buddha, this is what he said. But then some falseness, meaning impurity arise, and then it mixed up and then it looked like that. So he contemplated that and then became enlightened. Now the next monk, uh, the pure youth moonlight. So maybe he's very young, this young monk named Moonlight, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I remember that long ago, beyond Kaupas, as many as there are sands in the Ganges, there was a Buddha in the world named Water God, who taught all the bodhisattvas to cultivate the contemplation of water and enter samadhi. I reflected upon how throughout the body the essence of water is not in discord. I started with muscus and saliva and went on through digestive juices, phlegm, semen, blood, to urine and excrement. As it revolved through my body, the nature of water was identical. I saw that the water in my body was not at all different from that in the world outside, even that in royal lands of floating banners with all their seas of fragrant waters. At that time, when I first succeeded in the contemplation of water, I could see only water. I still had not gotten beyond my physical body. I was a bhikshu then, I mean at that time, eh? 
now he also is, yeah, but at that time he was. And once when I was in dhyana repose in my room, dhyana I mean meditation, then, yeah, a disciple of mine peeked in the window and saw only pure water there, which filled the entire room. He saw nothing else. The lad was young, in that disciple of his, and not knowing any better, he picked up a tile and tossed it into <laughs> that water in the room. The monk was contemplating water, therefore he identified himself even already with water. He saw concentrate, that nothing else there except water. And then his disciples saw only water, he's just a kid, you know. Normally you see water and sometimes they throw a stone to see it, boom, <laughs> something like that, to see the circle. Yeah, they do that with no reason. It hit the water with a plunk. He gazed around and then left. When I came out of concentration, I was suddenly aware of a pain in my heart and I felt like Sariputra must have felt when he met that cruel ghost. That's another story. I thought to myself, I am already an ahat and have long since abandoned conditions that bring on illness, mean he won't get sick ever. Yes. Why is it that today I suddenly have a pain in my heart? Am I about to lose the position of non-retreat, meaning the position of non-retreat, just like non-return, you know, I mean, you always forward, you never go back to the physical existence ever again. Yeah, I mean, you're forward already, you would never come in back. But he doubts it because he has a pain in his heart and he thinks maybe he lost their status, maybe he has to, maybe one day he somehow return to the ordinary status, you know, like a human or whatever in the physical. Just then, he was wondering like that, just then the young lad came promptly to me and related what had happened. I quickly said to him, when you see the water again, you may open the door, wade into the water and remove the tile. <laughs> redo the things, okay, redo the action. Yeah. The child was obedient, so that when I re-entered Samadhi, he again saw the water and the tile as well. He opened the door and took it out. Imagine, huh? When I came out of concentration, my body had returned to normal. This sounds like a fairy tale, eh? <laughs> Imagine. You already have so much concentration so that you became even identical with water, with whatever the object that you concentrated upon and still cannot discard whatever that is added onto your being at that time, such as a stone, you know, or a tie from the kid. Imagine, yeah? So collective karma does happen, you know, does exist, yeah? That's what it is. Even though we don't do anything wrong, but if we associate with wrong people, hmm, they can also contaminate you, make trouble. Yeah, even modern people understand that. They say, choose your friends carefully. Eh? And in the Bible even say, don't be among meat eater, wine drinker. Yeah, ancient time, new time, it's all the same, all the same wisdom that we should choose our associate carefully. Yeah if we can. Sometimes we cannot. So just protect yourself with the five holy names, okay? And whatever the power of your meditation, pray to the Master to protect you, and maybe you're okay, yeah? That is a problem, yeah? We live in the society. It's not possible to always avoid. Sometimes I say a house, but actually it's not. When I say my house, it's actually a cave. Because we always say, my house, my house. You know, cave is a very rare phenomenon. So I forgot, just like recently, I have to talk to a being called the ultimate master, you know, the self. And I forgot that name all the time. I keep saying, supreme master. <laughs> <laughs> 
enlightened master, highest master, omnipresent, omnipresent, anything but the ultimate master. And I have to redo it again. I said, sorry, I forgot. I have, <laughs> I have to say that an ultimate master when I talk to that being, you know, my great self, whatever. It's habit, you know, when something new is difficult to remember. Mm. So therefore, being a greatly enlightened doesn't exempt you from all the trouble water around you, huh? Okay? Mm. Just be always vigilant and protect yourself with all you have, though. And pray to the Master also, always stand by. Hmm? But sometimes it's not because of the collective karma, sometimes it's because of your karma. Huh? You did something in the past and that one rubbed off into the present, which is the condition through which you can be born and live until you die. It's the, uh, the present karma, yeah? Or maybe you have done something and you forget this lifetime. Yeah. Add on karma. <laughs> After initiation, if you don't add on any karma, then you're clean. You should be safe enough, yeah? But if you associate with other people, of course, then it's not as smooth as if you just... If at the time of initiation, you keep to yourself until, you know, you're gone, then maybe less trouble. But that's easier said than done. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have come here. <laughs> you would have just stayed with me, or you just have become a monk or nun somewhere, or just stay somewhere enjoying yourself. <laughs> Outside, feel lonelier than when you're alone. Believe me, it's like that. I feel lonelier when I'm in the city with the crowd or in the restaurant that kind of life, I feel more lonely than when I was in the Himalaya all by myself. And I feel the food don't taste as pure, even though so many flavor, you know, not as good as when I was in the Himalaya, you know, back in my own chapati and peanut butter, yeah. <laughs> and drink the Ganges River. By the way, yeah, today we mentioned that, about my happy time, eh? my happiest time. And you say, oh, we can all go there. And if you go there, then it's not happier time anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's the difference if I sit there and talk to you or sit here and talk to you? <laughs> You're so cute. I mean, alone, yeah? <laughs> In a small little hut, <laughs> living with scorpion and snakes and centipede. Whatever, yeah, I don't feel as scared as when I live in the city. This kind of fear, you know, from people around you, or from the situation, or from the world, it just rub off on you. So even if you live together among the people, you still sometimes feel some airy kind of feeling, you know, some not safe feeling, huh? Yeah, so I had to lock my door all the time, just at least a peace of mind, you know. Otherwise, every little boom outside or something, I woke up from samadhi even. Yeah, don't feel that safe. Yeah. Even sometimes I forgot to lock the door. I haven't woke me up. I say, security. I say, what means security? Something wrong? And then I look around. Ah, I did not <laughs> lock the door. Yeah, it's funny, you know. It's funny. And uh, they, they would give me messages of some, some kind of warning. I told you a long time ago that when they send a message, there are some sound, you know, either like melodious music or some ring like a phone or like a fax machine or like SMS and snooze or something like that. But if you sit next to me, you won't hear it. It's just very loud. Sometimes very loud. I mean, loud enough for me to hear. Even during my sleep, I would wake up right away and I asked what's wrong, okay? Then they would send me the email, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, normally it's very short. It's not long because if it's too long, I'm too tired, you know, to check it out. It's very uh, to the point and short, very short. One or two sentences, five words, three words, four words, or one word. And then they let you guess what's the rest of it. <laughs> That's why when they say security, I wonder what, you know? 
And then I just look around, ah, yeah, maybe it's the door. And sometimes I want to go somewhere and they told me I'm not going. I just said, don't go, that's it. And I have to figure out why. Or I have to ask them, why is that? Because figure it out, take too long, you know, I have to go to Akashic Record or whatever. It's very tiring, yeah? I asked them why, and then they told me, maybe that's one word, not safe or unsafe, just like that. Then it's clear enough, there's no need to explain. But if I want to know why unsafe, then of course they will explain. They can be very long-winded also, <laughs> but mostly they know I don't like <laughs> long-winded, so they keep it short. Okay, yeah, the calendar again, huh? Yeah, you like the calendar part, don't you? Huh? Okay, now the monk continued. I encountered limitless Buddhas and cultivated in this way until the coming of the first come one, king of masterful penetration of mountains and seas. That's the name of the other Buddha until that time. He cultivated until that Buddha come into his life, his world. Then I finally had nobody. My nature and the seas of fragrant waters throughout the ten directions were identical with true emptiness, without any duality or difference. Now I am with the thirst come one and am known as a pure youth, and I have joined the assembly of Bodhisattvas. I mean, all this time he has been so pure like that, and he has never felt his body. He always identified himself with either the fragrant sea the body of sea water or river, whatever, he had no body at all, all this time. He has the body, but maybe he is too, too purely concentrated. So even though he's born, he always feels like he's a uh, water. <laughs> Lucky nobody keeps throwing stone <laughs> into his body. <laughs> Otherwise, not only heart pain, your liver, <laughs> lung and everything. <laughs> Imagine going outside there and seeing the, the body of the water moving in front of you. Or behind you, <laughs> wouldn't you feel like, okay, test it, <laughs> throw the pong, <laughs> see if it's real water or your illusion. <laughs> Don't do that. If you see some chunk of water moving in front of you, stay away from it. You might get wet, okay? <laughs> and Don't throw stone in him. Now he joined the assembly of uh, Sekamoni Buddha, and then he became a monk. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration by means of the nature of water. <laughs> I penetrated through to the flow of a single flavor, and I obtained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena, and the perfection of buddhi. This is the foremost method, concentration on water. So it's not like you just contemplate on water. Or different kind of water, you see, even the water that mixed with your uh, excrement or urine. He's so pure that he can even, he has no differentiation. All of that, it's just like pure water to him. That's why he say he's successful in contemplating water until only one flavor, one water flavor. There's no difference between water or defied water or pure water to him. Okay, uh, next one. The Dharma Prince, Vaiduria Light, his name, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I can still remember back through eons as many as the sands of the Ganges. You know everything. <laughs> Maybe I don't need to read. I just need the name. I read the name. <laughs> you add on the rest. In your mind. I read it for the sake of somebody at home, okay, who are not here. <laughs> Otherwise, you know everything already. I remember that to the time of a Buddha named Limitless Sound, who, oh, life after life, always Buddha coming and going, huh? Lucky us, no? Who instructed the Bodhisattvas that fundamental enlightenment is wonderful and bright. He taught them to contemplate this world and all the beings in it as far as conditions propelled by the power of wind. That Buddha at that time told his disciples to, to recognize that this world and everything in it is illusion, anyway, <laughs> by the power of the wind. <laughs> Meaning, 
from nothing. It's born from nothing. How can the, the power of the wind create anything? So that just means illusion. This world is false. So contemplate on that. At that time, I contemplated the position of the world, and I regarded the passage of time in the world. I reflected on the movement and stillness in my body. I considered the arising of thoughts in the mind. All these kinds of movements were non-dual. They were equal and the same. I then understood that the nature of movement does not come from anywhere and does not go anywhere. Every single material particle throughout the ten directions and every upside-down living being in it is of the same empty falseness. Upside-down, yeah? You never know if the, the, the earth is up or down. Now we are sitting here upright, but <laughs> maybe our heads are down, we don't know. Huh? <laughs> the world keeps rolling, and sometimes we are up, sometimes we are down. So every upside down living being in it is true, huh? So all of that is empty, is illusion. And so throughout the three thousand great thousands worlds, the living beings in each of the worlds were like so many mosquitoes confined in a trap and droning monotonously. Caught in those few square inches, their hum built to a maddening crescendo. Not long after I encountered the Buddha, Shikamoni, I attained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. My mind then opened, and I could see the country of the Buddha unmoving in the East. I became a Dharma prince and served the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. My body and my emit a light that make them completely clear and translucent. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. I contemplated the power of wind as lacking anything to rely on, and I awakened to the body-mind. I entered samadhi and meshed with the single wonderful mind transmitted by all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions. This is the foremost method, according to him. Contemplate on the wind. Can you? <laughs> I mean the nature of the wind, he means nature of the wind. You, you must really be concentrating. Then the essence will reveal to you. It's not about the wind, because you can't see the wind, you can't touch the wind, you can't even imagine what this wind is like. Nah? But if you concentrate, you think about it long enough, and also because the Buddha transmitted this method, yeah, by the power of the Buddha, things will become clear to a practitioner. Mm. So he thinks concentrating on the wind is his method. There are so many different methods. You know? In Vietnam, one of the masters tell his disciples, just lay down or sit down and look up on the ceiling and put a piece of red cloth, concentrate on that. And they also, okay. <laughs> Long time ago, one of the enlightened masters in Vietnam taught that method. Just concentrate. Or somebody concentrate on the candlelight. Now, another one. Everything clear of that monk from him? Yeah? Okay, we go next one. The clearer the, the story, the less calendar. And I like it also. <laughs> Because by now you understand so many things already, I don't have to explain anymore, right? Even I just say one word, you can fill in the rest already, right? The sands of the Ganges River, <laughs> and eons of Kaoba. <laughs> now, there was another monk named Treasury of Emptiness Bodhisattva, arose from his seat, bowed to the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, The thirst come one, and I attained boundless bodies at the place of the Buddha, Samadhi Light, as one of the ancient Buddha. At that time, I held in my hands four huge precious pearls, which shone on Buddha lands as many as the motes of dust 
in the ten directions and transformed them into emptiness. In my mind, there appeared a great perfect mirror which emitted from within ten kinds of subtle, wonderful, precious light that poured out into the ten directions to the farthest bounds of emptiness. All the royal lands of Barnas came into the mirror and passed into my body. There was no hindrance to this interaction because my body was like emptiness. My body could enter with ease as many countries as there are fine motes of dust and could do uh, the Buddha's work on a wide scale because it had become completely compliant. I achieved this great spiritual power from contemplating in detail how the four elements lack anything to return to and how the production and extinction of false thoughts is no different from emptiness, how all the Buddha lands are basically the same. Once I realized this identity, I obtained patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. I used the contemplation of the boundlessness of emptiness to enter samadhi and attain wonderful power and perfect clarity. This is the foremost method. You see that? Mm. Another one who contemplates the... Uh, measureless uh, emptiness. But still, it's not like that. This is the power of the Buddha that transmitted to him. So awaken in him this ability, is clarity, purity, in order to perceive wondrous things, which is normal man cannot, and normally he also cannot ever uh, experience before. So that's his method. I'm just uh, we read to see if anything I need to explain. Anything I need to explain? No. Oh, uh, you enlightened already, right? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> now, next Bodhisattva named Maitreya, Maitreya Bodhisattva, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, yeah. I remember when, as many cowboys ago, as there are five modes of dust, Oh, it's a change. It's not again just river sand anymore. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> a Buddha named Light of Sun, Moon, and Lamb. Oh, there's so many lights, Sun, Moon, and Lamb. Ah. In the old time, they have great names, eh? auspicious names. Appeared in the world. Under that Buddha, I left the home life. Yet I was deeply committed to worldly fame and liked to fraternize with people of good family, buddy buddies, with influential people, instead of one-pointedness, listening or practicing the Buddha's teaching. He's still buddy buddy with <laughs> powerful people, and get influence or some good things. Then the world honor one, I mean that Buddha. Then the world honor one taught me to cultivate Consciousness, only concentration, just consciousness. And I enter that samadhi. For many aeons I have made use of that samadhi as I perform deeds, as many Buddhas as there are sands in the Ganges River. My seeking for worldly name and fame ceased completely and never recurred. Purify, done with the worldly fame. When Burning Lamb Buddha appeared in the world, I finally accomplished the unsurpassed, wonderful, perfect samadhi of consciousness. I went on until to the ends of emptiness, all the lands of the thirst come one, whether pure or defied, existent or non-existent, were transformations appearing from within my own mind. Yeah, all the universe he realized inside him. Were honor one, he addressed the Buddha now. Were honored one, because I understand consciousness only thus, the nature of consciousness reveals limitless thus come ones. Now I have received 
the prediction that I will be the next to take the Buddha's place. Wow. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. I was intent upon the contemplation that the ten directions come only from consciousness, only from your own yeah, consciousness. When the conscious mind is perfect and bright, one enters the perfection of the real. One leaves behind reliance on others and attachment to incessant calculating and attains the patient with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. This is the foremost method. Okay, there's a lot of philosophical talk. Just mean he attained enlightenment, okay? <laughs> Simple, clear. So for him, that is the best method. Cultivate consciousness. Next, Dharma Prince, great strength. Together with 52 bodhisattvas of similar rank, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I remember when as many as Kalpas and... <laughs> okay. <laughs> good, you have good memory. <laughs> so, as many aeons ago as there are sands in the Ganges, yes. a Buddha called Limitless Light appeared in the world. In the same aeon, there were twelve successive first-come ones. Oh. In the same aeons, not the same time, huh? Aeon, a uh, long, long time. Okay, so that twelve Buddhas have appeared in the world together with this Buddha, all together, thirteen Buddhas appeared in one aeon. So how many hundreds of thousand years one Buddha come? A lot, a lot. Huh? Not like every thousand years one Buddha come, huh? Not necessary. Yeah, maybe teacher teach the same method, but not master. It's a different story, okay? Different story. Uh, the last of these successive first come ones name light surpassing the sun and moon. Wow. So if you see this Buddha, maybe you have to cover yourself <laughs> because his light is even brighter than the sun. We could hardly look at the sun already. If he's brighter than the sun, what do we do? Huh? Go see the Buddha, buy sunglasses. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> Still must go see him, okay? Buy sunglasses and shade yourself. <laughs> Buddha, are you still there? <laughs> that Buddha taught me the Buddha recitation samadhi. Just like nowadays, uh, the uh, lotus sect, uh, of the Buddhism, the Zen sect of Buddhism, they keep repeating something. Or uh, they repeat the name of Amitabha Buddha, yeah? Yeah. And that is called Buddha's name recitation. And then you can enter Samadhi, supposed to be, yeah, like, like here. Suppose there were a person who always remembers someone else, but someone else he remembers has entirely forgotten about him. If two such people were to meet, even if they were to see each other, they would not take notice. They would not recognize each other. If two people remember each other until the memory of each is deep, then in life after life, they will be together like a form and its shadow. And they will never be at odds with each other. Out of pity for living beings, the first come ones of the ten directions are mindful of them, as a mother remembers her child. If the child runs away, of what use is the mother's regard? But if the child remembers his mother in the same way that the mother remembers the child, then in life after life the mother and child will not be far apart. If living beings remember the Buddha and are mindful of the Buddha, certainly they will see the Buddha now or in the future. They will never be far from the Buddha, and their minds will awaken by themselves 
without the aids of expedience. A person who has been near incense will carry a fragrance on his person. It is the same in this case. It is called an adornment of fragrant light. On the causal ground, I used mindfulness of the Buddha to enter into patience with the non-existence of beings and phenomena. Sometimes in the ancient time, they used different expression that we don't. Uh, it's difficult to translate. <laughs> now in this world, I gather whatever it is is you know enlightened. Okay, just enlightened. Mm. Now in this world, I gather in all those who are mindful of the Buddha and bring them back to the pure land. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. I would select none other than gathering in the six organs through continuous pure mindfulness to obtain samadhi. This is a foremost method. Whatever it is, you don't want to practice, right? So we don't need to explain. Yeah. Just make more, <laughs> more, more crowd in your mind. So because uh, he attained enlightenment, eh? he could even take other beings, you know, and help them to go to pure land, liberated as well. Not bad. Whatever method that was, he was enlightened enough hmm, to take some people with him. Some soul, you know, back to the Buddha's land. So he think that is the best method. You know? Gathering in the six organs through continuous pure mindfulness. Meaning, it's just transfer, you know, all the feeling from any organs in his body and just all concentrate. You know, instead of paying attention to the heart pumping or the liver pinching or um, the uh, blood coursing through his body, through his lung or whatever, you know, he just transformed them all into a pure one-pointed concentration. Then he attains samadhi and get this power. So for him, you know, transforming, gathering all the organs together into one-pointedness, that is the best method. Then, ah, we are almost at the end now. One seeing Bodhisattva, we the end now. Yeah, but there's a calendar coming <laughs> <laughs> from her power. <laughs> yeah, pay attention, huh? Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, important, VIP here, yeah? And she will tell you the benefit of practicing Guanning method, okay? Not just why, but how she get power and what she can do with that power to help whom, whom, where, where, how, how, okay? Right. Important. Listen. Guanning hmm. Bodhisattva arose from his seat. Here he's a man. <laughs> In Asian, mostly when we talk about Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, we always imagine as a lady, because when she was known to us, she was a lady. Hmm? Through some legend, yeah, she became Bodhisattva through a female form. Yeah. Uh, and she appeared to most of the uh, disciples at that time, or after Buddha time, in a female form, hmm? adorned with uh, dignified, dress and, and a, a bottle of water <laughs> and a twig of a willow to purify you with the water. Yeah, that's what she known in China and in Vietnam also. Mm. But here, in India at that time, as a he, yeah? So, the Kwan Shing Bodhisattva arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, World honored one, I remember when as many kalpas as there are sands in the Ganges River. Wow, God, you are good. <laughs> <laughs> you pass your exam anytime. <laughs> there was a Buddha in the world named contemplating the world's sounds, the sounds of the world. Sounds, many sounds. It was under that Buddha that I brought forth the Bodhi resolve, I mean, she decided, she wanted to attain Bodhi, 
to attain enlightenment, attain Buddhahood. Yeah. Uh, Buddhi wisdom. Yeah. That Buddha taught me to enter samadhi through a process of hearing and reflecting. Initially, I entered the flow through hearing and forgot objective states, since the sense objects and sense organs were quiet. The two characteristics of movement and stillness crystallized and did not arise. After that, gradually advancing, the hearing and what was heard both disappeared. Once the hearing was ended, there was nothing to rely on, and awareness and the objects of awareness became empty. When the emptiness of awareness reached an ultimate perfection, emptiness and what was being empty then also ceased to be. Since production and extinction were gone, still extinction was revealed, still in, tranquil. Suddenly I transcended the mundane and transcendental worlds and threw out the ten directions. A perfect brightness prevailed. I obtained two supreme states. First, I was united above with the fundamental, wonderfully enlightened mind of all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, and I gained a strength of compassion equal to that of all the Buddhas, the thirst come ones. Wow, incredible. Through hearing only. Yeah. Contemplating the word sounds doesn't mean doesn't mean the worldly sounds, yeah? Mm. Because in the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha also reminds the practitioners that if you rely on, on sounds or forms to reach uh, enlightenment, then you will never see Buddha. It means the normal light, the normal sound here, yeah? And the form, meaning maybe you just uh, rely on the, the Buddha's form, the statues, something like that, or chanting or whatever that make noise, yeah, you won't be able to attain Buddhahood. That's what he meant. In the Diamond Sutra, it's another sutra, very famous Diamond Sutra. Because the Buddha taught uh, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva at that time to enter samadhi through a process of hearing and reflecting. If you keep Concentrating and hearing the outer sound. There's no way you enter samadhi. If the Buddha tells you continue to hear the sound around you, then it cannot be that he can enter samadhi. And reflecting as well, contemplating on that sound. So that's not the sound that we hear normally. But he, the Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, attained two supreme states, and then he was united with all the Buddhas in the Ten Direction and be able to make use of the transference of compassion and the transference of uh, strength, yeah, from all the Ten Directions, Buddhas. If you are one with the Master, or the Master of all the Ten Directions, of course you share their quality, yeah, whatever they have, you have, because you become one with the Buddhas, with the Masters. Therefore, she has all the compassion, the strength of compassion equal to that of all the Buddhas. At the time she became one, she lost herself already. He lost himself, lost the ego self. That was the first power that Kwan uh, Bodhisattva gained through the hearing method. Second, the second power he gained Second, I was united below with all living beings in the six paths, and I gained a kind regard for all living beings equally. On the upper, he connected with all the Buddhas and has all their power of compassion. And then on the second power is that he also connected with the lower level, meaning all beings in the six paths of existence, namely, Hell, ghost, vicious animal, asura, asura. Human. human, six paths. What is Korea? Mm. Tian Ren, Asura, 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 Asura,
Mm. You miss one. Okay, never mind. You you done well for your age. <laughs> you better than me. <laughs> We're both old, you know. We don't remember. We have to ask younger people. <laughs> It's translated as heaven, human, asura, hungry ghost, hell, uh, animals, uh, whatever. We're not mm, interested. <laughs> we don't want. <laughs> we don't want to even remember anything. Okay, these things no good for us. We have no relation. <laughs> Just get lost. <laughs> All right. When they say heaven, doesn't mean high heaven. It could be the heaven of the thirty-three. It could be the heaven of the chakra. God, you know, the naughty one, always making trouble for the master and the practitioners. Yeah? These are also heaven, but we don't even want that kind of heaven. They are short-lived. Yeah. And they're not worthy of our attention or desire to go there. Mostly, when a practitioner begins on his uh, true seeking path, these kind of gods from these kind of heaven always come around and try to test them and make it trouble for them, because they worry. Therefore, now, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, because of the Kuan Yin practice. She can unite with all the Buddha as well as the suffering beings from the low heaven down to the hell. That's what he said. There are story about Kuan Yin Bodhisattva related with being a lady. She was a woman, huh? and she was like a nun. One time she was born in Asia, no? somewhere in China. Mm. She was married to a man, yeah, and it was okay, everything okay. One night she saw her husband, this one hair growing out in the wrong place. It looked um, <laughs> unbecome, you know, looked um, wrong. <laughs> so she used a knife. I don't think they have a scissor at that time. She Take a knife and she wanted to cut it, and suddenly the husband awoke. You know, maybe pulled it a little bit and it hurt. Ow! And then he awakened and he thought she wanted to kill him. And then he sounded the alarm and the whole family woke up and want to bring her to to justice. Yeah, so she ran away. Yeah, and uh, disguised as a man and come into a temple to stay there, want to be a monk. Mm, shave head and wearing monk robe and everything. Novice only there, yeah. and then one of the the temple goers, a girl, you know, fell in love <laughs> with him. Uh, actually, it's a her, but fell in love girl. She's a woman and disguised as a man. So the beauty is even double. Mm? And she was young, you know, and beautiful. And became a man, still very beautiful, even more beautiful than if he's a man. No beard, no rough face, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so one girl fell in love with this uh, woman, man, monk, and then she keep uh, eyeing him and seducing him. But of course, she, she she's a woman, no interested. Even a monk normally no, try to run away from seduction, not to talk about woman. And she, of course, she keeps refusing, and trying to avoid and all that. And then this woman, uh, this girl, was a lady of, of some influential family, and so she make hell. Yeah, and then she, out of frustration, or maybe want to make trouble, or just to satisfy her desire and bodily lust, she had an affair with the servant or something, and uh, pregnant. And then, uh, of course, at that time, if you're pregnant without a man, is a big, big, big crime. Especially if you are a lady of good standing, so they beat her up. The court, dig a hole in the ground so that her stomach don't get hurt. Make her lay down with the stomach in that hole, yeah, so not hurt the, the baby. And then try to beat her up so she can confess. He didn't have to beat much. She say is a monk in that temple. Is a father. Okay, of course, what she cannot have, she just want to make trouble for him. Yeah, she want to force him into marrying her, but he still don't marry. Don't want nothing. 
just bad reputation. But because there's no evidence, they cannot do anything to the monk also. Even then, it harmed his reputation. After she gave birth to that child, the whole family, and she brought the child to give it to that Kwaning Bodhisattva a woman monk to take care. You see, he also don't, didn't say anything, Just accept the baby and go out back in milk to feed the baby until he grow up. And of course the temple uh, throw him out, nah? but take pity on, on him because uh, the abbot asked him, oh, her, oh, yeah, he, she always say, no, I did not, yeah, but then still, the, the law is the law. You know, a temple, you cannot have a, 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 a monk who has, uh, you know, a reputation and having an affair with somebody and making trouble, you know. So, nevertheless, the abbot still feels sorry for him or her and uh, let her stay outside, nearby the temple, outside of the ground, but next to the temple. So, still can have somewhere to stay, you know, like a little hut. So to take care of the baby, and she back in for milk every day, but she never complained or anything. Till the baby grown up, okay, and then one day she got sick and died. And then after she died, everybody realized that he actually was a she, and he was wrongly accused. And then they <laughs> beat the woman up again, and she confessed it's because he was infatuated with him, but she, he refused her all the time. So, so she wants revenge, he, she, him, her. <laughs> so make up, make up the story like that. That is one of her stories. Yeah. There are other kind of stories as well. So this is a patient endurance, endurance of a real saint. Yeah. They don't care. There's also another story, some maybe Japanese or Chinese, maybe Japanese monk, a Zen monk somewhere. And also another infatuation from some of the so-called disciples or temple goer, you know, incense burner, <laughs> apple offerer <laughs> to the Buddha and then eat afterward. Also like the monk, but the monk did not like. And then she also, you know, have pregnancy with somebody else and then blame it on him. And, and then after she has the baby, they bring it to him and say, this is your kid. He said, oh, is that so? And then now you have to take care of him. He said, oh, is that so? <laughs> and they left it, the baby and then he took care also. He didn't say anything. He only said, is that like that? <laughs> is that so? Meaning, is that what you said? <laughs> he doesn't say that what you said is not true. He just surprised. Is that so? <laughs> whatever, you know, meaning whatever you say is fine. And then he took care of the baby too. Yeah. That's a closer to modern time. Mm. All right. So the Kwan Yin Bodhisattva continue. Were honor one. Continue talking to the Buddha, the present Buddha in this story. Because I served and made offerings to the first come one, Kuan Yin. There was another Buddha named Kuan Yin, and she served under him and made offerings to him all the time. I received from that first come one, meaning from Kuan Yin Buddha, not her, you know. So that first come one transmit the Vajra Samadhi of all being like an illusion, as one becomes permitted with hearing and cultivate his hearing. Because I gain a power of compassion identical with that of all Buddhas, the thirst come ones, I became accomplished in thirty-two response bodies and enter all lands. Means she become like omnipresent. Yeah. She can enter all lands at will. But not like the will of the human the doing without doing, the will without will, then. Mm. Now, what for? She can have 32 transformation bodies. You can have many more. She has 32. And that's enough to <laughs> respond to all the 10 directions and enter any land to help people. So now she will um, raconte, she will um, tell you 
tell you what she can do uh, with these two powers, yes. Because she has 32 response bodies, transformation body to respond to the prayers of people. So now he, she tell the Buddha what she can do with that through the Kuan Yin hearing practice. Well, honor one, if there are bodhisattvas who enter samadhi and vigorously cultivate the extinction of our flows, who have superior understanding and manifest perfected penetration, I will appear in the body of a Buddha and speak Dhamma for them, causing them to attain liberation. She can manifest herself, himself like a Buddha. Okay? If there are those who are studying, that's what's one cause that she can help. The next case. If there are those who are studying, who are tranquil and have wonderful clarity, who are superior and miraculous and manifest perfection, I will appear before them in the body of a solitarily enlightened one and speak Dhamma for them, causing them to attain liberation. Solitarily uh, enlightened one is like a self-enlightened Buddha, yeah? Du Jie Fu la. So she can appear like that also. Yeah, not just uh, Buddha like, like Sekamoni Buddha, but uh, uh, lone Buddha, Buddha as well. Lone Buddha normally they don't teach. They enlighten themselves. And then they don't teach a lot of disciples. Yeah? But Sekamoni Buddha is like normal Buddha. Teach disciples. Take their karma, etc. Deliver them. Next one. Next, next uh, power. Or next uh, ability. If there are those who are studying, who have served the twelve links of conditioned causation and having severed the conditions, reveal a supreme nature, and who are superior and wonderful and manifest perfection, I will appear before them in the body of one enlightened to conditions and speak Dhamma for them, causing them to attain liberation. It depends on the person who, who needs help. Eh? If he needs a Buddha, then Kuan Yin Bodhisattva will appear as Buddha. If he he uh, would be more appealed by a solitary Buddha, then she will appear thus. And if a person needs to be delivered by a conditions enlightened one, then she would appear thus. She just appear different body, different form. If there are those who are studying, who have attained the emptiness of the four truths and cultivating the way, the four truths, we talked about that yesterday, have entered extinction and have a superior nature and manifest perfection, I will appear before them in the body of a Sanghir and speak Dharma for them, causing them to attain liberation. She can appear anywhere, anytime. It depends on the condition of the so-called Chelas, the disciples. But you mark it here. These disciples, so-called you know, cultivator has, you see, superior, wonderful perfection, manifest perfection, have a superior nature, etc., etc., and also study in the way. But maybe just short a little guidance to attain perfection or liberation. Then, at that time, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva can appear to him, preach Dharma to him, uh, cut out that last knot so that that person can attain liberation. Not ordinary people. <laughs> it says everything here. That person has a superior nature, you see, and manifests also perfection. And study in the way as well, in different, different method. Almost get there, but have no guidance to continue to climb upward. Maybe the last ladder, uh, step that he should climb then she can come and help. But without that, this person probably would never be able to severe the last tie and then get liberation. So it's good help. Mm. For example, some people are very sincere and 
want to practice the way, but there's no master in the world. No Buddha appear at that time. You see, 12 Buddha in one aeon, so many hundred years, thousand years, one Buddha. So during the time, maybe nobody there to guide this person who is almost there, but may be lost. And once you lost that, you have to reborn again and cultivate again until thousands, hundreds, thousands of years waiting for a Buddha to come to fix the last link for you. So Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, because of her power, she could even manifest in just transformation body, no need physical body. Normally people need a physical master in order to transmit a method a uh, blessing, you know, to, to get liberation huh? or enlightenment. But because Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, powerful, she uh, practice Kwan Yin method, she can manifest herself, appear as if a physical body and teach that person. But because that person is already paying the price, yeah, it just need one last chance to go to liberating land. And because at that time there was no Buddha there, no master in that land or in that person's area, and he wouldn't know where to go to find. So Kwan Yin Bodhisattva can do that. Isn't that wonderful? Huh? Yeah, keep waiting for master and you become a giraffe. <laughs> 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 Loki, looking. <laughs> where is the master? Maybe, maybe one of the practitioners practicing, longing for master, saw his long become long neck and incarnate as a giraffe, I don't know. <laughs> just, just a joke. So, there's another case, see, the, the Kwan Yin Bodhisattva helped a lot, a lot. I told her her calendar is long. <laughs> mm. Oh, 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 oh. <sighs> we did not come to the explanation and encouragement to us why we should practice Kwan Yin Method yet. We only encounter one Bodhisattva who is practicing Kwan Yin Method. This is Kwan Shi Yin, Bodhisattva. We have not gone anywhere yet. Stay longer. <laughs> if you want to hear the end of the film, yeah. <laughs> the end of the story. After all this, okay, then Manjushri, the wisdom number one disciple of Buddha, will explain to you one by one. He will analyze what method is no good and why Kwan Yin method is good. Right now, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva only advertised to you that because of Kwan Yin method, how powerful she has become and how helpful she can be to other beings in the six paths. Yeah, okay? And even to heaven. But we are not anywhere yet. We, she just have a few yet. She has a lot more to tell you. Okay? It's uh, wetting your appetite. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> and then later when Manjushri explained to you why we have to practice, why we should not practice this, why we should not practice that, from all the 25 methods, why not, 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 and why this, then you will accept because you want to become powerful like Bodhisattva Kwan Yin, okay? If there are living beings who wish to have their minds be clear and awakened, who do not engage in mundane desires and wish to purify their bodies, I will appear before them in the body of a Brahma king and speak Dharma for them, speak teaching, the true teaching for them, causing them to attain liberation. Dharma means true teaching, yeah? You all know that already, I hope. If there are living beings who wish to be the heavenly Lord, leader of the heavenly beings, I will appear before them in the body of chakra and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. If living beings wish to attain physical self-mastery and to roam throughout the ten directions, I will appear before them in the body of a god from the heaven of self-mastery and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. 
If there are living beings who wish to attain physical self-mastery and fly through space, I will appear before them in the body of a god from the heaven of great self-mastery and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. If there are living beings who are fond of ruling over ghosts and spirits in order to rescue and protect their country, I will appear before them in the body of a great heavenly general and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Uh, she speaks different Dharma, okay? Uh, according to different wish, she, she showed them different way. Like maybe different mantra, different way how to accomplish this as a general of heaven. <laughs> Otherwise she would have appeared just as a Buddha or any saint, but she appeared the general of heaven. So that the person who wished to do that, trust. See, oh, he's a general from heaven. That's what I want right now. Okay? So they pray and she hear everything. That's why the Asian people, the Buddhist people, they trust the Kuan Yin Bodhisattva very much because she's supposed to hear in all directions. She hear all the prayers and responds to them promptly. Maybe she does respond, but not everybody can see her. Why did you leave never? One of my earlier monk acquaintance, maybe he was in the army or something, I can't remember, but he was in the whole group to be uh, shot dead with another twelve or some more people. But he always repeat Kuan Yin Bodhisattva all his life, even before he became a monk, just a normal monk, not a big huge, not a fully besetted monk. He did not die. Yeah, he just fell down, and on top of him there are other dead bodies, but the bullet missed him. Maybe later on, or maybe in other sutra, it says that whoever often respectfully recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva with a pure heart ne, and sincerity, uh, fire won't burn him, water won't drown him, bullet cannot kill him. And so he told me I, he believed it because it happened to him. Everybody else in the group died, but not him. Yeah. Ah, revenge, you know, things or politics. But really, he said Bodhisattva saved his life. He's still alive. He was one of the refugees, monks, that I helped during... Uh, that time right? before I was married and after I was an interpreter in, in one of the refugee camp and he told me that story and he was one of the four monks that witnessed when I utter inside my wish all the incense, the whole big bunch of incense like this all of them curved out none of the ash fell out they just curve down, but they don't fell out. Normally, if the, the ash too long, it burn, it will drop the ash down. None, not one millimeter of ash fell down of the whole group of incense. So <laughs> he and the other monks said, Wow, whatever you wish must be great and it will come true. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know what I was asking for. <laughs> it came true all right. <laughs> no, I don't regret, okay? I'm just joking. I don't regret. I'm glad it came true. Yeah. The whole bunch of incense, none of the ash fell. It burned until the end. And just stand like that or curl, but don't fall. You know, the whole stick of ash, <laughs> just ash. <laughs> nothing inside, nothing outside. Yeah, just burn and stood there like new, like new, like not burn. <laughs> it burned, yes, it's all ash, but it doesn't fall at all. And that's why they told me if I wish and the incense ash don't fall at all, then whatever I wish will come true. Yeah. 
and they know it must be very great. Yeah. Not a normal wish. <laughs> I did not tell them. They told me, don't tell us what you wish. Just wish it and burn the incense, see how it goes. And that's how it is, yeah. So he's one of those witnesses of the monks. And the whole family become monks, yeah. He, his wife, daughter, son, also became monks. They all become monks. And they still live in Germany, have their own temple. I just recently um, sent them some financial offering to repair or to pay for the mortgage, whatever, yes. I look, search out to find them because they changed address since a long time already, yeah. I'm glad to have found them. <laughs> I also taught them Kwaning method, <laughs> only for the mother and the daughter. The two monks, the men, you know, don't, did not <laughs> think of learning. Because at that time, I wasn't even a nun, nothing. I went to the Himalaya, I came back, I have a couple of disciples, I came back there to visit them. And then they trusted me, they learned with me, and practicing. Yeah, so knowing everything now, knowing uh, what I am inside. Yeah. So when they asked her how she is, she said, oh, due to Master's blessing and grace, I'm 80-something, still very, very strong. <laughs> she talked like you. <laughs> talked like you disciples. Yeah, it was a long time already. I didn't think that they would continue to follow. Mm. All right. Why did I tell you this? No idea. Kwan Yin, ah, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva. Really, bullet cannot kill. Yeah. Yes. Some people also report that fire cannot burn them in some instance in their life. And they should have dry where they did not. Yeah. Something have them, or they just float. <laughs> the power of running is very great, you know. It depends on also on your sincerity and karma. One of our residents before, a long time ago, when I first came out, I didn't have a home, remember? No house, nothing. We camped on the river, in Ping Tong, uh, Hao Ta River. And uh, one of the nun residents fell into a big, deep water, Hole. But she didn't drown, she didn't joke, nothing. I just get a, a stick of bamboo fish her out. <laughs> she hold on to it, they pour her out. And she, when she came out, she didn't joke, she didn't cough, she, nothing, no water. I asked her, are you okay? She said, yeah, okay. I see everything in the water, just like here. <laughs> yeah, and I can breathe also, she said to me. She breathed in the water without having any water come into her lung. Yeah, at that time, yeah? And we didn't think much about it. It's too many things, too many things happening, you know? We did not think much about it. <laughs> like, whenever I go near the water and I just, like, wash my hand, oh, thousands of fish fly in the sky, flying and flying, flying, oh, so long time. We still have some of your older brother witness, you know? And the monks and nuns at that time, they are witnesses. They're flying and flying in the air, you know, cross, crisscrossing each other. The whole lake is full of flying fish, and these are not flying fish. They're just normal fish, you know, about small size, and they fly high and crisscross, so happy. And one time I enter one grass field, all the crickets, they go, hey, hey. Or oh, jumping in the air very high, they jumping and come down, jumping and jumping, dancing, oh, so long time. Yeah. And even recently now, I feed the fish sometimes here, you know? So when I pass by, they don't move, nothing. But whenever I come near to the, the place that I feed them, even now I go quietly, there's no, no noise I can make there, no noise. My shoes are slippers, you know? And before I even arrive, they already know I'm coming. They keep flying in the air. The fish in the pond, <laughs> flying. <laughs> and making a lot of, you know, chup. Yeah, jumping and oh, and, and flying. And it's a very, very happy time, yeah. And because of you this day, I didn't feed them at all. But I tell the attendant to feed them. I hope they do. <laughs> They feed them in the other places. I feed them where, you know, near where the dogs are. Yeah. And whenever I am home, you know, just coming out, not even near the where I feed yet, 
They all jumping, showing off, you know, jumping in the air and <laughs> and dancing in the water. All, all kind of things they do. Very, very beautiful beings they are. Very grateful. Mm. This is kind of tourist area, but later on they turn into Buddhist kind of uh, resort, you know. So many people bring fish and turtle to to free into the the the, the legs for marriage. They buy them and then put them in the water. But nobody takes care of them, you know, and the water was very dirty. So I have to tell them, you know, find a way to purify the water so, so the fish don't suffocate. Or maybe we take some of them out, put them in big waters, big river, so they can fly and jump and run all over the place. It's freedom. Mm-hmm. This place, a lot, a lot of inheritance, a lot of work. Ducks, fish, turtles, <laughs> birds, squirrels. We feed them every day in different, in different places. Yeah. And the duck, whenever I come out, they come to me, come to me. <laughs> Even I don't feed them anymore, I don't have time. You know? So I say, sorry, I can't afford it no more. I can't afford your affection. Just stay where you are. My attendant feed you every day. I make sure of that. They do. They do. But they keep jump, jumping to me, you know, <laughs> like this. <laughs> so cute. And, and I don't want to. I say, I don't want to have any acquaintance with you, please. Because otherwise it will break my heart. But then I still have to take care of them. Last time there was one duck was very sick, you know, having loose stomach for many, many days. And then they took him to a doctor with the wrong one. And no cure, nothing. And later we took to the right one, you know, one of your brother know is the better one. More more specialized in ducks and uh, domestic fowl. So then he got cured. But it takes some time, you know, we have to specially take care. Normally they run away from you, no? But he didn't run because they, they know me. So I use my jacket to cover quick and then I, I scoop him up and bring it for them to take to the doctor. Yeah. Even small things here, small things there, but I always, the Maya costs a lot of work for me. Understand? A lot of work. Mm. All right, enough. <laughs> My God. <laughs> love the story, really? <laughs> you love the duck, <laughs> the fish, and the turtle. They also try to come up. They come up waiting to eat together with the fish. The fish they make uh, vegan, you know, with a small, small pellet. The turtle can also take some. <laughs> Very cute. <laughs> Very cute. It come, you know, only the head pop up. The body don't, body heavy, but the head pop up. <laughs> Very small head. Very cute. If they see me, they also try to come here up. Normally you don't see them. But if they hear me or see me or if the food, they try to come. Too slow, you know, the fish are too fast, but still can get some. Yeah, I guess they eat something in the leg as well, you know, they don't eat much. Just they like the feeding <laughs> for a change, yeah. Because of the love, I guess, because I wish them also liberation from all the hunger and thirst and forever liberated, don't ever need to eat again, depending on human again. And they like that, <laughs> they like that. <laughs> They're very grateful. Okay, maybe i see you next time, huh? Thank you. Tomorrow uh, we have to move. You know, you know your other place. It's very nearby. I like it there also. It's just 
not as comfortable for you, but I like it there better. Under trees, you know, natural, and, you know, my familiar cave, <laughs> a lot of trees, you know, and uh, just feel more natural, easy. But it's not convenient for sitting, meditating when it rains. Otherwise, I like that place. I don't really like building anything, not really, no. If I have a building, I, l I will stay in if I have to work. I don't choose it. Okay, thank you very much. Do me vu, pere Jacob, huh? Do me vu, do me vu. Ding 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 dong. Uh, tomorrow evening leave, yeah? Mm -hmm. Ah, sorry. Thank you, Master. Bye-bye. Everything. Why so early? A lot of uh, karma. It's a three-day retreat huh? first. They had it as a three-day retreat, so a lot of people set up their flights that way. Oh, I see. Yeah. Of course, three days retreat. But it doesn't mean you have to leave or you cannot come early. They people come early <laughs> and they don't leave. <laughs> because they stay as long as they can. But if you want, you can stay. If you want to leave, of course, three days. It's more convenient for people, just three days. One week is too long, right? Too long. A lot of work at home and children, parents, and mortgage, uh, car insurance. <laughs> <laughs> All these are very important. It's a pity, yes. It's, it's really tying us all down, you know, these things. And it seems like we can't escape somehow. Can you escape? Hmm? Just stay here, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything that's impossible if we put our willpower into it. Ah, uh, no, not really. If you want to, you have a free will. Yeah. Just that if you have family and kids and elder parents or depending on you, that is a problem, you know? Mm. Family is a big problem. Mm. Uh, people often tell me, Oh, Master, if I know you earlier, I would follow you. I would not marry. But already follow me, still marry. <laughs> just joking, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying that for fun. <laughs> I can change my mind. <laughs> it's so funny. You don't have to leave your home and follow me. What I mean is to, to be alone and practice, follow the practice, you know? If you don't, then you have entangled yourself in something else, and then from that something else comes something else and never end. Never end. Always the same. That's why I always try to simplify my life, even though my life is still complicated. I simplify as much as I can in my personal life. And then it's not too bad, you know? So I minimize people who have to take care of my house, you know, to cook for me, you know? Uh, the kitchen, they don't always cook according to my taste, but never mind, it's more simple to eat together with everybody, you know? Pure or not pure, I don't care, just something. <laughs> just to make excuse to eat and to continue living, yeah. Otherwise, if I cook for myself like before, it was a different situation, I had to. But now if I don't have to, then I, I do something else. Nowadays I don't think I can cook for myself anymore. I hardly have time to eat, <laughs> not to talk about cooking. Okay, untie what you can or bear it. Huh? Try to put up with your life, whatever you can. Huh? Okay, yeah.